distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to welcome to the podium His Excellency, Mr. Lassi, Mr. Lars Loke Rasmussen, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Denmark, to address our meeting. Excellency, you have the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, engaged people of the world, welcome to Denmark, welcome to Copenhagen, welcome to two weeks where we are to perform what is most difficult in politics, to make difficult but necessary decisions now in order to address mounting problems of the future. Global warming knows no borders. It does not discriminate. It affects us all. And we are here today because we are all committed to take action. That is our common point of departure. The magnitude of challenge before us is to translate this political will into a strong common approach, to forge an agreement that will provide for effective global solutions. Climate change is higher on the agenda than ever, and so it should be. The grim projections from science grow more alarming each day, and already many face the dire consequences of global warming. It is our mission to come to the aid of those who already suffer and to deliver a long-term solution to the mounting problem of global warming. This is our task. This is why we need a strong and ambitious climate change agreement here in Copenhagen. The sheer magnitude of our task is matched only by our determination. For more than a year, we have been conducting intensive consultation in preparation for this conference. In that context, I have had the pleasure of engaging with leaders from around the world, your leaders. Without exception, they have been supporting an ambitious agreement to halt global warming. I am, of course, painfully aware that we have different perspectives on the framing and precise content of such an agreement. And I am sure that no one in this hall underestimates the difficulty we are facing in finding a common approach in the coming two weeks. But the political resolve to forge a global agreement is manifest, and differences can be overcome if the political will is present, and I believe it is. As we move ahead over the next days, we will rely critically on you to help to develop an agreement that is both acceptable to all parties and at the same time strong and ambitious, an agreement that is just and equitable, an agreement that is effective and operational. To achieve that, we shall need all the technical skills and diplomatic entrepreneurship you command. The world relies on you to successfully conclude the country-driven process that you launched in Bali. It relies on us to support you in achieving that success in an exclusive and transparent manner. As I speak to you this morning, 110 heads of state and government have announced that they will be coming to Copenhagen next week in the conclusion of this conference. Their presence reflects an unprecedented mobilization of political determination to combat climate change. It represents a huge opportunity, an opportunity the world cannot afford to miss. Your leaders do not come to Copenhagen just to talk. 
they come to act. And they come not to agree to just anything, but to agree to an effective deal based on our fundamental principles, on our common resolve, and on the political, social, and economic reality in our countries throughout the world. The agreement world leaders should adopt next Friday here in Copenhagen must be founded on the legal principles inscribed in the Framework Convention and it must respond to all aspects of the mandates agreed upon in Bali two years ago. It must seek to capture progress achieved within the negotiations both under the Convention and under the Kyoto Protocol providing a powerful response. Importantly, it must launch immediate action. The deal that we invite leaders to sign up on will be one that affects all aspects of society, just as the climate change does.